Hey, it's Adam with the Soul of Truth here. Um, I'm back. It's been a long time. Sorry about that. I'm going to try to do more videos. I've been super swamped lately because of, you know, helping people with solar all across the U.S. and especially California where uh, NEM 3.0 just got proposed, like the final um, ordinance. And the, the date for voting is January 27th for it to be approved. But it does not look good for the future of solar in California right now. Um, basically, when this first happened, I thought it was because there was too much solar on the grid. There's actually more solar being produced in, in March here than, uh, than the entire grid is using um, at 1 o'clock uh, p.m. in the spring. Uh, and that's because not many people are using air conditioning and stuff like that. It's pretty mild, you know, 65, 70 degrees. But solar's cranking. So uh, this is the impact of solar over the years. Um, and, you know, this, this belly is getting more and more solar production, uh, potential overgeneration on the grid. Hawaii actually banned solar uh, five, seven years ago for two years and then um, allowed it again, but canceled the energy metering. Your meter can't spin backwards. You don't get credit. And they require you to get a battery now. So California is even worse is where we're headed with that. So basically the CPUC here has not said it's really a danger to the grid. Like, you know, we can transfer energy to Arizona and, and we're a lot bigger than Hawaii. Uh, so that's, that's not really so much of an issue, but really they're saying solar work too good, saving people too much money. And it's costing low income uh, and other houses 67 to $128 more per year to support these NEM programs. Um, well, Edison, you know, uh, net profit is like $2 billion a year. So I, I, I feel like they probably don't need to do that. But um, that's also 5 to $10 a month. I mean, that, that's not uh, too bad. Um, 100 to $230 for, for uh, 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 kind of average people. Still 8 to, to uh, you know, $15 a month. Um, basically, they're saying that, that they're going to make solar customers pay uh, this part of the cost now and not have it be as good uh, with NEM 3.0. And every 5%, the, the grid changes. So there's a couple articles out here. The highest tax is ca in California now, uh, a solar tax, I guess they're calling it, um, in the U.S. Uh, is for California. And this article kind of sums up the points. This is incredibly complicated. So I'm going to try to make it make sense. I mean, monthly charge of $8 per kilowatt. They're going to only give you a uh, minimum uh, feedback for credit that you do. And then they're doing a credit step down. It's like, man, I, I spent a lot of time analyzing this. So I'll go over that in a second. NEM history, there was no solar credit before 1996. Then 96 to 2017, NEM 1.0, which is what I'm on, got solar 12 years ago. It's great. I got full credit. I only have a 75% solar production versus my usage, and I get paid back by Edison. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so, you know, you don't even, you didn't even have to do a, as big of a solar system back then. Uh, and you, I only got, you know, a dollar a month charge from Edison. Uh, so NEM 2.0, starting in 2017, every 5%, this trigger changes this tier. And you were grandfathered in for 20 years uh, after you get permission to operate for that solar, final permit, permission to operate through the utility company. So NEM 2.0, uh, still 100% credit, one-to-one -one buyback. Um, some small non-bypassable charges, which means they charge like a little bit at night if you use a ton of energy when your solar's not working, one to two cents a kilowatt, like really minimal, I mean a couple dollars a month generally. Um, but they did introduce anti-tariff uh, uh, time of use, anti-solar time of use charges from 4 to 9 p.m. Your solar's tapering off and now you're charged more for your air conditioning and, and stuff like that. So you have to do a bigger, bigger system, you know, maybe a pre-cool your house, do a quiet cool fan, possibly a battery. Uh, but it's still solar works really well still, um, you know, and the minimum charge is generally about 10 to $15 a month now. So NEM 3.0, this uh, uh, is going to be voted on January 27th and basically how it breaks down and then 4.0, you know, who knows when that'll come to and it'll just be worse and everything's getting worse. So 2.0 versus 3.0. Let's kind of talk about that because if you do solar, if you already have solar, you're grandfathered in, although they, they look like they're reducing that grandfathering in possibly to 15 years instead of 20, so I might be screwed, but um, in three years. Uh, but if you do solar right now or before this goes into effect, which is supposed to be kind of the summer uh, of, of, neck of 2022, um, you'll be in NEM 2.0. NEM 2.0 is great. You know, here's kind of, so first of all, this is very rough numbers. There's a lot, a lot of variables going on here. 
you know, no need for comments on, oh, this is not this much, this isn't accurate, whatever. I mean, honestly, uh, there's very roof variables where you are in California, where you are in Edison. I mean, this is specifically SCE, but if you're on the coast, if you're inland, uh, how good your roof is, do you have shading? Um, what kind of roof do you have as far as the Costco and the production? Like, there's a lot of variables. So I just kind of, this is actually a little bit inland, pretty good roof facing for the size system that you would need to offset a $100 bill or 200, 350, or $500 bill. Uh, basically, uh, NEM 2.0, it's all green. It looks great. You're saving 20 to $200,000 over 25 years. Five to eight year payback if it's cash. Um, I mean, these are, this is all great. And this is still available for a few more months basically you do need permission to operate so even if you sign paperwork to start getting solar no guarantees uh, it needs to be done permitted permission to operate and then you're locked in for 15 or 20 years depending on the approval um 3.0 oh boy all right they're trying to promote batteries so let's say uh first of all um no battery so let's say you don't do a battery you get the same size solar system cost the same amount you know that's not really going to change i mean Minimum wage keeps going up and employment costs and workman's comp, so you know maybe it will go up. Um, material's hard to get. It's in, in ships, shipping containers on the ports and stuff. So uh, you know we, we could be looking at cost increase also, but let's say you get a little three kilowatt system for your $100 or so electric bill, 110% production. Um, well, um, you know, net cost is about eight to ten thousand dollars. You could finance that for like 50, 60 bucks a month but you're going to still get charged um, like $40 a month from Edison now because you're only getting five to six cents per kilowatt uh, when your meter's spinning backwards. So you're using that solar energy um, at the time, but in the spring, when your air conditioning's not on and your meter's spinning backwards, you're only getting about 25% credit for that production. So you kind of want a battery, but a battery is also expensive, especially for a little uh, solar system, adding a battery on there. Uh, so anyway, with no battery, you got, you know, your $55 a month, say, finance cost. You got your $40 a month service charge from Edison. And that's for, for energy that you're still using when the solar's not producing it and you only have that small credit applied toward it. So then you also have this $24 uh, kil uh, charge. This is the $8 per kilowatt. So, so eight times three is $24. I think they're going to charge it monthly. I mean, it's not very clear, but that's what I'm assuming, $8. And then you get a $5.25 credit um, that is available for the first four years of a transition period. So that would be a $15, $16 credit for 10 years. You get locked in. Now, if you don't do it in 2022, then that credit goes down and the tax credit goes away. So this kind of has to come into effect too. Um, my chart here is based on 2022, next year, after NEM 3.0, but the full credit. Um, so your initial savings is like seven bucks a month now, instead of $30 a month. If you don't get that credit, it is negative. 12 year ROI possibly with cash instead of eight years. Now you're only saving instead of $34,000 over 25 years. You're saving $2,000 the first 10 years and then about 4,000 over 25. This, this is very estimated. There's not a lot of data go off, so I had to kind of estimate this and do some different calculations, and, and I did the best I could. But uh, we aren't really going to know until, until this goes fully into effect. So now, if you get a battery with a, uh, a very, really low bill, um, which is what they kind of want you to do, that battery is, is a pretty significant cost. I did like a 10 to 16 kilowatt size battery here on all of these. You might actually want two or three batteries with the bigger usage here. So that's another factor that you have to consider, but um, that would be about $132 a month financed. And then you got that, uh, and then you have a less of an Edison charge, $15 instead of 50, instead of 40, because that battery is helping you. You know, that's what that difference is there. Uh, you still have the $24 uh, PV charge and the $15 credit. So then you have a negative $23 a month initial, but you are going to save a little bit of money over tw 10 and 25 years. Um, thousand and may and well actually 25 years it's going to cost you twelve thousand dollars so so that's maybe not good <laughs> for a battery with a small system i would say and that's why it's red <clears throat> so obviously this is much worse costing twelve thousand dollars over 25 years to do solar versus uh saving twenty six thousand dollars with nem 2.0 so not great so now we get more into higher and what's what's happening is solar they're saying that this is to help low-income people you know save 15 uh, uh, five to ten dollars a month oh great 
save five to ten dollars a month. Well, those low-income people now can never do solar. Solar does not make sense for them anymore. Or middle class. Forty percent of solar customers are low and middle class, middle income. So now all those forty percent solar is off the table. Now they're stuck with Edison, who is going to raise the rates even more because now you're locked in and solar doesn't work as well. That's what's going on here. I'm thinking there was, uh, you know, two billion dollars. Hey, that's a lot of money that you could use to pay off, uh, you know, the governor or the CPUC. Um, that's probably what's going on here. There's probably, uh, I mean, this is so anti-solar, anti-renewable energy, and pro-utility that that it's ridiculous. So basically, it's making solar only work for people with two, three, five hundred dollar average electric bills. I would say about two hundred and fifty bucks. Is gonna two to two fifty is is where it's kind of gonna make sense, but you're still not gonna save that much money. But hey, at least you're sticking with the utility still and getting solar, and although they're charging for it. So uh, two hundred dollar bill, you got your five point six kilowatt system, uh, ninety two dollars a month, seventy four thousand dollars savings. So basically, you know, just to um, run through this a little quicker. Uh, well, now you're you're uh, without a battery, you're paying seventy five bucks uh, a month average and uh, starting, and then that. Well, actually, that cost wouldn't really go up too much if you have enough solar to provide for your energy. Um, without doing solar, your cost goes up, so your savings does go up. Um, you know, from eighteen dollars a month, that's your initial savings, and then it goes up from there. So, you know, you still—it's still like a ten-year payback, uh, four thousand bucks after ten-year savings, and then eight thousand after twenty-five years. Even though your utility bill goes up a lot more over twenty-five bills without solar. You don't notice the savings doesn't jump quite as much because you're losing this thirty dollar a month credit after ten years. So that's also a factor involved in there. Like I said, this is complicated. Then with the battery, a battery starts to kind of make sense. I mean, it's a pretty significant cost increase with cash instead of ninety two bucks. Now it's you know one hundred seventy one dollar possibly a month financed, depending on the type of battery you do uh, and the number. But uh, then uh, twenty five dollars a month uh, instead of seventy five. So you're saving about fifty bucks a month or so. Um, with that battery, and uh, but you're getting a $45 charge still and the $30 credit, so negative uh, $11 a month initially. So you're going to save money in the long run, but not right away, basically. So it just gets better and better the bigger your electric bill is, which is how it always is with solar. The bigger bill you have, the more money you save. A $350 average bill, um, nine kilowatt system. You know, kind of same thing. Now instead of $116,000 uh, savings, you're saving $16,000 with. Uh, um, to over 25 years and 30,000 with a battery. So now a battery starts working better with bigger systems. That's what I basically noticed here. And then with a uh, $500 average bill, a battery uh, works a lot better. But you might want more than one, more, you might want more batteries, you know, at that point too. That's how it's headed. Uh, January 27th, hopefully they don't vote this in. And I don't know if there's still a chance that it can be modified or changed or if it's just getting like approved or not approved. It has to happen. You know, every 5% solar, um, you know, like I showed here, they have to do a new NEM rate because they're like upgrading the grid, changing how it works. And that's just kind of how, how the program is. 5% um, residential solar. And we actually, you know, have like 20% uh, percent renewable energy or 30% now in California. Um, so, and these numbers are all based on 2022 when we have a 26% tax credit and we have the $5 and 25 cent a watt credit uh, reduction too uh, from the utility uh, that you're getting. And here's how that would break down over the years. Now, instead of, uh, um, you know, $67 credit, you're getting 50. Oh, so the two options here, it's not clear what they're doing. I'm assuming they're saying it's uh, $5.25 a watt, 25% less that, then 50% less than 75% less, like a 25 year flat off 252. Maybe they're doing a 25% tiered reduction. So it's like 25% of 525, then 25% less of that, then 25% less of that. That would be a little better, you know, option one, but I think they're gonna do option two, the start option here, because that's uh, because they suck. So um, you know, and that kind of is just simpler. You know, uh, uh, that you only get 25% of the initial uh, after after four years. Um, so this is what I think they're going to be doing. So um, instead of, oops, instead of getting uh, you know that $67 credit uh, three years later, if you do solar now, you're only getting $16 credit, and they're still charging you. Uh, $103 for a month for having solar for a 12 kilowatt system. You know, that's the big thing. You know, these are the charges, 24, 25, 
72, $103 for like a 12.8 kilowatt system. So the bigger solar you get, the more solar you get, the more you pay monthly. And right now you get a credit for the next four years, for four years it steps down, but you get it for 10 years. So after 10 years, you know, even if you were saving money, maybe you're not saving any money anymore, which is, uh, which is sad. Basically, that's how it looks. Um, I, I don't really know what to, what to recommend. I mean, I recommend getting NEM 2.0 as soon as possible or already having it. If you're on, like me, only have three years left net, possibly three to seven years left of NEM 2.0 or 1.0, uh, maybe I should add some solar and get a new permit and, and, and get a fresh 15 or 20 years, depending on what they approve. Uh, or I might need to get a battery eventually if I go to NEM 3.0, maybe, and just be kind of pay a lot more money. I mean, I get, I get paid back by Edison right now uh, uh, almost every year, and I pay 10 bucks a month minimum. I mean, I did solar 10 years ago. I mean, it's amazing. And my solar paid for itself five years ago, so it's just like pocketing three to $4,000 a year now. But uh, it's not gonna be like that anymore, and things are, are not looking great. So basically, get solar as soon as possible, and let's try to vote, sign stuff, whatever, to stop NEM 3.0 from looking like this which it got, um, this is their proposition from the CPUC. We need to try to stop this, and I don't know what really we can do at this point. Um, there's a, a CALSA, is a really good organization that is helping solar that did a lot of promotion to, uh, you know, yeah, take action now, so go, go here. CALSA, C-A-L, California Solar Storage Association, C-A-L-S-S-A, -S go here and do what they say. Um, message the governor, here we go. Say, stop taking money from the utility and getting paid off to do this horrible thing to California. Don't say that maybe, but uh, you know, I would send this letter and uh, do what they're saying to do. Maybe I'll do it right now, but not on, on video because it'll take a little bit too long. It's already been long enough. Like and subscribe. I'm gonna be doing more things to help. We're gonna try to stop this. We're, and either way, I'm gonna figure out how to make solar work the best. You know, hey, maybe let's go totally off grid eventually. That actually is another video I'm gonna be doing. So make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, right now it's really expensive to do that and it doesn't work really well because you don't live in a little cabin out in the woods with a 12 volt and a swamp cooler. You have a track house and air conditioners and 510. You know, it's, it's very difficult and expensive to go completely off grid. Almost nobody does it. Um, but it's gonna start happening. It's gonna it's gonna become more available and people are gonna start just disconnecting from medicine period But I guess they won't care because you know th your solar is just costing them money anyway And they're just gonna charge you for it now. So but uh, hey at least they're not getting money and um, We can do something about that. So that's where it's headed I think about five to ten in the next five to ten years We're gonna see a lot more completely off-grid and I'm gonna be doing some videos about that and and um, how that could look now and in the future Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.